some quite extraordinary lines. When a nuclear armed country fights to the end, it will have consequences far beyond the borders. It is not a threat. It is a fair worry. And there was plenty of reaction in the chamber there as well. You heard applause, you heard uh, anguish from some people as they talked about the ideas of picking up a gun to fight back against the Indian curfew. This was the Pakistani Prime Minister, as I say, over the last 50 minutes or so, uh, making direct reference to the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who spoke maybe two or three speakers before him and didn't mention the issue of Kashmir. And all the while outside in New York City, of course, where the United Nations is based, we are seeing this. In fact, these are live pictures we've got of an anti-Modi protest. You see a lot of Pakistani flags uh, being held there. Um, Stop the genocide, I believe, is what you see in some of those um, placards. Occupation. Um, Kashmir, we will never die. Uh, Emotions running incredibly high on this issue of Kashmir. Let's talk to our correspondent then, shall we? Jonah Hull is at the United Nations today. He's been listening to that. And and as I said, Jonah, it took a while to get to the point. We sort of wondered where Prime Minister Khan might be going. And then when he got there, he was unequivocal about it. Well, he was always going to get there. He has vowed uh, throughout this week and indeed before this meeting that he would use his speech to the General Assembly to forcefully drive home this point uh, about India, about Kashmir, about warnings that he has made throughout the week to world leaders of uh, conflict between nuclear armed neighbours, similar to what happened back in February uh, when warplanes from the two sides fought dogfights in the air. India had bombed Pakistani territory for the first time in 50 years. Uh, and warning, indeed, of this massacre in uh, Kashmir, as he sees it. Under curfew now, Indian-administered Kashmir, 8 million people. When that curfew is lifted, he said, has Mr Modi thought what will happen? There will be a backlash. People will come out onto the streets and they'll be mown down by the hundreds of thousands of Indian troops there. This was an extraordinary uh, stage-by-stage attack on India by uh, Mr Khan, attempting to lay out the context, the background, to help people to understand what is at stake here and what it's all about, Uh, accusing India of rebuffing his attempts to try and reconcile, accusing uh, India of overriding 11 UN declarations that had sought to provide and guarantee the rights of Kashmiris, accusing Mr Modi, incendiary this, of following a fascist ideology derived from Hitler and Mussolini, one based on the purity of race. Uh, He believes, Mr Khan, that the overall goal here is to ethnically cleanse Muslims from the face of of India. It it, it doesn't get more incendiary than this. And ultimately, of course, the warning, the real warning and the call to the United Nations is step in to stop what could become a nuclear war between these two neighbours. Extraordinary stuff, wasn't it, Jonah? And and, uh, Narendra Modi himself doesn't get the the right of reply, as it were, because he had already spoken and he kept it pretty short and sweet. Well, indeed, I I mean, Mr Modi will have known as well what sort of uh, speech uh, Prime Minister Khan was going to deliver. He spoke just an hour, less than an hour before he had the opportunity to address Kashmir. He very pointedly uh, didn't. Indeed, it has been the position of his government uh, that this is an internal matter. It is not one in which he wishes to invite outside scrutiny. Uh, President Trump, during the course of this week, has offered to mediate between the two sides, uh, but only if they want it. And there is absolutely no sign that India is going to invite that sort of scrutiny either. Uh, Take a listen now to what Uh, Narendra Modi did have to say when he uh, obliquely referenced the idea of Kashmir, if not mentioning it uh, by name. We belong to a country that has given the world not war but Buddha's message of peace. And that is the reason why our voice against terrorism to alert the world about this evil rings with seriousness and outrage. We believe that this is one of the biggest challenges not for any single country but for the entire world and humanity. The lack of unanimity among us on the issue of terrorism dents those very principles that are the basis of the creation of the UN. And that is why, for the sake of humanity, I firmly believe that it's absolutely imperative that the world unites against terrorism. 
Well, this uh, General Assembly week drawing to a close now. There was never any likelihood of a meeting between uh, the leaders of India and Pakistan. Indeed, that is certainly not going to happen now. But what ha has happened in its closing stages is a dark sort of pall now hangs over the UN here in New York with warnings by uh, Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan there of the potential for nuclear war, of the potential for ethnic cleansing in Kashmir. Extraordinary stuff, wasn't it? Jonah Hull is our correspondent at the United Nations. Thank you, Jonah. And as we say, while those speeches were going on, these pictures live from New York, where the United Nations is, of course, based an anti-Narendra Modi protest, people holding Pakistani flags there and decrying the uh, Indian intervention in Indian-administered Kashmir, which Prime Minister Imran Khan was uh, speaking so passionately about not long ago.